Victims are not weak. Victims have strength. They're not in the position they're in because they're less of a person. In fact, they have enormous strength and resilience because they use it every day. I learnt quite quickly in preparation of the inquiry into Luke's death and the coronal inquiry that there was only one person that was responsible and that was Greg and that you know as a loving caring protective mother I could never have, have, have perceived that was possible that he would have planned and indeed done such a thing and I think you know people need to understand that you know when you have a child no one loves that child more than you and you would do anything and there are some things you could say where you could point the blame and say if they'd have done this, that wouldn't have happened. But ultimately it's a waste of, um, it's a waste of time because everyone is doing the best that they think at the time. But the training and understanding of family violence and the risks is really poor. You have got choices and, and, and I have been able to channel my grief in a way that I hope makes a difference in, in, in society. And we do not talk about grief. We do not talk about grief. We don't know what it looks like. They would expect you to be comatose in a shrouded room with the lights and never facing it public. I don't know why I didn't choose that path because it would have been incredibly easy. I think at the time you're so used to fighting that you just know you've got to keep fighting and it would have been I felt if I let myself sink into that abyss I would never have come out of it I still feel like that because you know you don't recover and then people talk to you about grief and you you know people will share their grief and tragedy and they'll say you never get over it and I think I have got a prison sentence and sometimes it is too hard to keep going but you do. I don't profess to be anything other than a, a vulnerable person that is still struggling with grief. It affects my judgment, it affects my ability to deal with pressure and stress and things like that but I'm human. People don't always see that side because you're putting on a brave face for whatever message you're delivering or what you're talking about it doesn't mean that other people don't see it or experience it or um, understand that. I think it's, it's interesting isn't it and it's not uniquely Australian as we know it is everywhere um, and I think we're just very conditioned we're very conditioned. Um, family violence was always something um, like a lot of family trauma you keep quiet. In the past, media didn't even communicate and the stories particularly, and when they do, they don't, get, they don't do a very good job of it. So, you know, we are seeing definite changes and improvements, but it is a big question. Why have we not recognised before now as a very lucky, privileged, progressive country? But we do have an underbelly. We've got to understand that this is a um, something that we all play a part in as a community where we condemn violence of any kind and there is never an excuse. Ultimately violence is a choice and it is because of, based on power and control. You switched. Yeah. He was a little boy in a growing body. Um, that felt pain and sadness and fear for his mum. And he always believed he would be safe with his dad and he would have trusted Greg. I'm here right now because I know you have a job to do and I want to tell everybody that family violence happens to everybody, no matter how nice your house is, how intelligent you are. 
It happens to anyone and everyone. And this has been an 11 year battle. Well, I think that, you know, that certainly has been what has really astonished people and caught their attention. And without any doubt at all, that's what really helped raise the awareness of family violence and give, gave me an opportunity, even though I didn't realise what it was at the time, to be able to feel, be heard and make some, some shift and change. And, you know, when I went out to the media, it really was in defiance. It, that my friends were actually going to go out and tell the media could they please leave because and respect our privacy etc because that's what the, you, you do on the movies isn't it that's what we all think you're supposed to do and I, I, I don't know why I know that I was I don't it's hard to describe the condition you're in when something like this happens because you are conscious but you and, and but you, you seem to come out in and out of some kind of awareness thing you you know it is you're not of yourself really I just heard them talking and I thought if anyone's going to tell them to go away it's going to be me I have no idea why I would think that or even feel that strongly quite frankly but I did so I just went out with the intention of asking them out of respect to 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 go um, and how it changed to be me talking um, was something I hadn't planned and I had a, certainly no idea or script of what I was going to say and I was have constantly been surprised since that people have been so amazed at that particular thing that I did. I also I don't like to remain bitter or angry and and, and say hurtful and horrible things because I felt it just lowers you to it lowers you and you need to rise above and be that better person. So I think, you know, I was, it's astonished people too that I didn't say anything hateful about Greg. I just chose to speak how I, uh, um, carefully, I guess, about um, not speaking in a disrespectful way about him, even though I was entitled to do, and everyone would have expected me to, to do that. But ultimately, you, we all just do the best we can <laughs> and in situations like that you know you shouldn't be judged because it's really that you wouldn't want anyone to find themselves in that situation of having to deal with such a, a traumatic event obviously uh, now that i'm a considered a key spokesperson in this area um, and i have uh, I'm recognized um, wherever i go it seems I, I know that a lot of people have their opinion and you can't, not everyone will understand and not everyone will like what you've done. But I have to say I'm, I, I get very, very touched when children make contact with the foundation and want to do a project on me and share some insights. And I, I just find that's incredibly moving actually. I've not had a portrait photograph taken like that. It's not like a family snapshot type. It shows me, I think, in a strong manner. I think it reflects me in a way that I haven't seen before. Nikki's, you know, a warm, lovely person. And I think she's an incredible photographer to do that. The portrait captures some part of me um, that lets you realise that there's a sadness that probably will never go away. But through that sadness, there's an awful lot of good things. I think, you know, we, I feel pleased to think that I may be able to get people to think differently about women or children or anybody experiencing violence. And I hope that I've been able to perhaps share some feelings around grief that also people who have loss and struggle and suffer with tragedy, that there isn't a particular way of handling something. We just do the best we can. And it's not something you just get over and get on with. And we, we really need to talk about 
grief and our own fears um, and stop judging people. If I'm able to um, give strength to some people, which are, it seems that I do, um, well, that's great because it's not an easy road and no one would ever say it is. But if people get strength from seeing my strength, I think that's an amazing thing I can give back, give people hope, give people strength, help them to understand that they're not alone and that there are many, many other people feeling and experiencing very, very difficult and challenging things.